Greetings folks, in this video I'll be looking at the ANET ET5X 3D printer. It is a larger print volume printer, budget price sort of entry level, mostly pre-assembled, very very easy assembly. Uh, I have tried the ET4, uh, there it is over there, still printing along nicely. They're quite basic. Um, they don't have open source firmware. I really do prefer the open source firmware that uh, the Ender 3 has. Uh, but with a few tweaks, you can get these printers printing quite nicely. Larger print volume, 300 by 300 by 400. You can see it is a much bigger printer than the uh, ET4. ET4 and the Ender are 220 by 220 by 250 print volume. They are FDM, Fused Deposition Modelling Printers. If you never knew what FDM was, I had to go and look it up. As you can see, it's up and printing. Uh, in this video, I'll go through the unboxing, assembly and basic setup as well. We've got the little doggy printing that comes on the SD card. There is also the ET5 Pro, I think, which is the silent one. As you can hear, this one isn't the silent version. It's reasonably noisy fine in a situation like this where I'm printing on the shed but uh, it would be a consideration uh, if it was inside. So let's go to the unpacking and setup and uh, how to use it and we'll come back after this and have another chat about it once I've done a few more prints as well to check the quality. Seems to be working quite well though. See you soon. Lots of nice foam packing, very useful for building planes this stuff so I'm going to hang on to that. Okay, oh we get a, a full kilo of uh, black PLA. It is substantially bigger than my other printers. So there's the gantry. We have dual uh, z-axis feeds. Pretty similar uh, sorts of plugs and everything to the ET4. So the universal style uh, power plug, spool holder, clippers, allen keys, wrench and screwdriver, nuts and bolts, a spatula, a little ruler, spare nozzle and micro SD card and connector and the drive belts. Print bed cover. Or you have glass as well. There's the hot end with the uh, feed tube and everything. Set up manual there. I have a loose bolt. There'll be a T-nut floating around somewhere. I'll just have to keep an eye out for that. There it is. I can feel it already. And there's the all-in-one printer base, which is the good thing about these ANET printers, they are 90% pre-assembled, unlike the Ender 3, which uh, takes ages and ages to assemble. Uh, this is the value of the ANET printers. So there's the big fella. Let's compare it to the ANET ET4, just for size. So there's the ET4 in comparison. So you can see here how much bigger the uh, print bed is compared to the, the little ANET ET4. Lots of packing, holding everything together. Oh, and we also get these uh, these blue rail packing thingos as well. Stop it sliding around, I guess. Let's have to pull them out. So there we go, we're pretty well unpacked and ready to go. Let's get rid of this stuff as well. Big heavy item, uh, but it survived perfectly well coming from China to Australia. So we have these two little T-nuts here, uh, a couple of holes in the side for the M4 16mm bolts and a couple of holes uh, from underneath as well for these M5 20mm. So we just Pop this in the slot, make sure the T-nuts go in the channels. So we can just sort of tighten them up a little bit. Probably don't tighten them up all the way just yet. Tip this over. I'm going to get in the way to do this. Just 
snug them up and we'll do the other side as well. Now we're going to fit the uh, x-axis belt on the gantry here and uh, to tighten the belt you actually move the motor backwards and forwards so you undo these uh, four bolts here so you can move the motor in and out. The x-axis motor, grab the belt, some cable ties there. And they say to put the belt in first, I think it'd probably be easier just to leave that off until we get the hot end on. Just sort of free up all the tubes and cables, print nozzle going down and we just slide it on from this end. So these wheels will engage in these V channels here and this one is adjustable in and out via an eccentric nut there. You just rotate that nut around and it moves that wheel in and out to uh, get the right sort of friction on there. But we just slide this on here. This takes a little bit of a push to get it over that wheel and then that is running on the channel now. At this stage it feels a bit too tight. We'll have to adjust that. You should be able to have no wobble but uh, be able to physically sort of do a skid with these wheels but that's a bit too difficult. All right so now we'll put the belt on. The belt just slides in underneath there like that. Teeth down, teeth go around this cog here. Then the ends of the belt just engage in a couple of little notches underneath the odd end here. I'll show you a close-up of this in a minute once I get them in. Do it by feel easy enough. So they are in now. I'll get in for a close-up. So here you can see where the belt hooks into these two little forks there, just to hold the ends of the belt. And now we need to tighten the belt by moving this motor out uh, and screwing it tight. We do want it to be reasonably tight. So just pull it out, tighten up. A bit of tension, you just don't want it to be floppy. Uh, otherwise the um, x-axis will move around. Very good, so that's on. We'll just loosen off the eccentric nut under there a little bit. See that's wobbly, so we just tighten it up. Stop wobbly there. A little bit too tight. Yeah, that's about right. Now I can spin that and it's not wobbling at all. And that will prevent these wearing out too quickly, being unnecessarily tight and not be wobbly. So that's good now. Now it's time to make all the electrical connections and we've got wires taped down here for left and right Z-axis stepper motors. And they just plug straight in. They're all very easy to work out what goes where. Plugs in like that, that plugs in like that. Now we have the filament tube, which just pokes in here. Poke it in as far as you can, and then pull the little clamp out. We'll check that again later on. Now we plug in all these electrical connections here, and they're all labelled, as you can see, so no drama finding where each one of them connects. Temp is this one here. BL is that one there. A couple of clips there that we pull out. There's a lug there that fits in. Just taking the tension off this wire here by cable tying into these divided holes. I hope that's what they're for. That just means that it's not pulling on the plug so much. Now we have the filament detector there. It tells you when the filament has broken or run out and we have the extruder here which forces the filament through. A little bit of a, a release lever there. I'll just show you with a bit of filament how that fits in. So we thread it through the detector. Make sure it goes in the hole there. Squeeze the handle and it a bit fiddly, but you will get it to go 
right through and down the tube. Now we can see it going down the tube there. So we push it all the way through, right down to the hot end. And that is ready to print. Finally, we have the spool holder, which we're going to mount up here using the remaining T-nuts. So we line up the T-nuts, pop them in like that. And tighten them up. That's good. Then we got the spindle here. And we just undo that one and screw it on there like that. Now I can stick this on straight onto the aluminium or we can use the uh, glass. The most reliable method I've found is to use glass and put uh, builder's tape over it. This blue stuff and yeah, they have no problem sticking to that and it's easy to get off as well. Uh, the glass and the mat seem to work very well for the first, I don't know, month or so, but then it just starts uh, not sticking so well. So. Eventually, you'll probably end up using builder's tape, I think. Now, you need to check the base for, for wobble and how tight the rollers are. These two rollers here on the right-hand side have the adjustable nuts, uh, and on the other side, they don't. So, you, know, you just need to check for wobble. Mine was quite wobbly, actually, and just adjust these nuts until the wobble goes away. That's running quite nice and smoothly now, so that's pretty good. And also the belt tension here uh, can be adjusted by moving this motor in and out, but that's feeling pretty good to me, so I'm going to leave that as it is. Just a quick view of the LCD screen. You can choose a language. English, French, Japanese, Spanish, Chinese. Uh, settings. You can move the X, Y, Z axis around and extrude a little bit of filament. Uh, the M here disables the stepper motors so you can move the bed around. We have info and upgrade for doing firmware update. Uh, prepare here we can set, uh, we can get it to preheating, we can change filament, load and unload and we can do the level here. I've just used the manual bed leveling, I find that pretty easy so I tend to do that most of the time. It does have auto leveling. Um, I'm not too sure how to use that yet, I'll show that in a future video manual bed leveling first is what I've done. The ET4 has a sort of an add-on auto level sensor which is a bit of a pain to use. This ET5X has the uh, auto level sensor built in so uh, that makes life a lot easier. Preheat the extruder, the bed and finally print. This is the supplied SD card. Uh, I chose the little dog print here choose the dog then click OK and it will start heat preheating then printing. Now while we're printing away here I'll just talk about a few little issues that I found and one of them is to do with the SD card slot. There's a big gap underneath that if you miss the actual SD card reader the card will fall inside the case there and you'll have to take the bottom off like I did. So I put a little bit of tape there behind just to stop it pushing in. Next one is the spool holder here. Uh, and I've had to put little uh, center cups in the uh, filament spool to lift it up a little bit and it, it makes it rotate nicer too. It doesn't jerk. Uh, but the spool holder is not high enough for the edge of the spool here to, cl to clear this top plate. So you can't actually use the spool holder as it is with the full size spools. You'll have to mount the spool down to the side or come up with a, some sort of centre axle to uh, lift the spool up away from there. Another little issue is uh, the angle that the filament comes in here and that's sort of rubbing along the top of the filament detector and that's going to carve 
a channel in the plastic if you just leave that like that we really need to have some sort of filament guide to have the filament coming in at that angle there uh, I have done it over on the ET4 I've just made a, a plastic one here that uh, holds the filament out at an angle on I found this one for the Ender on Thingiverse. That's a, a nice uh, guide pulley there, guide wheel, which I would really like to do for this one here. But yes, we will have to have that coming in at a, bit, a better angle somehow. So there we go, that's the finish of our first print. Print finished okay manual so that we can move it forward. There we go. A bit of rippling there. It could be because this is on a, a wobbly table. Stuck pretty hard, I can't get it off at the moment. But there's some pretty nice detail. We've got uh, eyebrows there. Nice little ears and a little tail at the back. That's a pretty decent looking print. In the next video I'll show you how to level the bed. Uh, there is manual and automatic bed leveling. Uh, I tend to use manual all the time because I find it quite easy. I haven't really worked out how to use automatic yet. So there you go, there's the ANET ET5X printer, larger volume budget price printer. Looks like it has potential and uh, we'll see you again in the next video. Thanks for watching.